According to a description of the time, it was ridden by a man disguised as a devil called Deceitful. The wagon in question was followed by ordinary citizens trying to grab a handful of hay. They were there to show that the material goods of this world are but alloy, all hay. Was Bosch perhaps influenced by religious processions and the carnival floats? The triptych of the hay cart illustrates the journey of life. At its center we see a crowd flocking in the wake of a huge cartload of hay at which all and sundry are grasping. It's the wealth they're striving to gain from the world. It's the image of greed. But covetousness leads men and women to discord, violence and even murder. People are prepared to kill or even to be run over by the wheels of the cart just to obtain a handful of hay, that is a handful of nothing. The clergy are prey to the same evil. The nuns hurriedly stuff armfuls of hay into their bags while a pot-bellied monk sipping his glass of wine oversees the good work. The hungering after wealth spares no one. The powerful of this world, emperor, king and pope, also follow the hay cart. If they appear calm and detached from the violence down below, it's because they already possess the hay. But they are nonetheless its slaves. No one seems to notice that the hay cart, symbol of the world, is drawn by seven devils, half man, half beast, towards the right hand panel, towards hell. Schiphol Airport, Amsterdam. The four paradise and hell panels from the Doge's Palace in Venice, accompanied by the restorer Gloria Tranquilli, have arrived in Holland. The containers must be unloaded, the blue flight cases retrieved, and taken by truck to Rotterdam. Panel paintings are extremely vulnerable to moist exposure and differences of temperature and it may be possible to prepare a work of art as well as you can for a travel to another museum still something may happen and it often does as a matter of fact sometimes for instance there is a crack in the wood or there is paint loss or something like that when you transport a work of art and you put it in an, in an airplane as long as it is in the airplane it's fine but then it gets unloaded put from one truck to the other that's the moment when something can go wrong. These panels were examined for a condition report before they left Venice. As soon as they're unpacked here at the Boymans Museum, they have to be checked over again. The comparison of results before departure and after arrival will enable the curators to see if the paintings have suffered during transit. Là, ce sont des tableaux de petite dimension où il y a vraiment un sens plastique très moderne. Les parties du corps euh, en lumière de ces monstres, les moustaches, les dents, etc., sont données par des petits empattements très nerveux euh, de cette technique de Bosch avec cette surface rêche, donc une peinture d'une modernité extraordinaire. Et puis aussi ces très forts contrastes d'éclairage, donc ces coups de projecteur dans les, les panneaux représentant l'enfer. Mais il y a aussi, donc vision de l'au-delà, on pourrait presque entendre vision futuriste parce qu'il euh, y a dans ce panneau euh, qui montre euh, la montée des âmes au paradis cette euh, idée extraordinaire des cercles euh, concentriques à l'intérieur desquels s'engagent, guidés par les anges, donc les âmes qui sont matérialisées, symbolisées par des petits personnages.
Because the highly fragile large triptychs cannot be transported to the Netherlands, they will have to be filmed in situ at the Prado Museum in Madrid. 50 years after Bosch's death, King Philip II of Spain, who had always admired his work, bought or confiscated all the remaining paintings he could get hold of. Even today, the Spanish consider their favorite painters in the Prado Museum to be Velázquez, Goya, and El Bosco. In all museums, there are quadros that no viajan because forman parte de la colección permanente porque se encuentran en un estado de riesgo no porque eh, se va, mientras están sin mover tengan peligro pero si se mueven pues pueden sufrir sobre todo por su tamaño y por eh, que son tablas las tablas son delicadísimas en este caso porque forman parte de la colección permanente y lo mismo que no salen las meninas o no salen otras piezas importantes que no se prestan no se pueden prestar This large triptych the garden of earthly delights has given rise to a host of interpretations In the 1950s the German art critic Wilhelm Frenger upheld that Bosch had been a member of the Brothers of the Free Spirit This sect practiced sexual promiscuity as part of their religious rites and sought the state of innocence that Adam had known before the fall. But in the late Middle Ages, pleasures of the flesh were considered as proof of man's weakness, at best a necessary evil, at worst a sin. And when Bosch made reference to the sin of lust, he always did so in a chaste manner. The couple hiding inside this muscle shell are a symbol of physical love. The women gathering fruit have succumbed to the temptations of the flesh, and the strawberry symbolizes the ephemeral side of sensual pleasure. The Spanish monk José de Siguenza spoke in the 17th century of the vanity and fleeting glory of the strawberry, whose taste, barely savoured, has already vanished. C'est une façon totalement nouvelle, totalement inventive, totalement innovatrice d'illustrer une idée qui, par contre, n'est pas spécialement originale. L'idée que le monde, depuis la chute, est voué au péché et que le châtiment du péché, c'est l'enfer. Il y a une inventivité, une richesse de l'imagination inégalée. Inégalé. Les associations dans le paysage des animaux fantastiques, des oiseaux immenses, le chardonneret qui est plus gros que les hommes, euh, des, de ces architectures euh, qui, qui, qui mélangent le monde minéral, le monde végétal, etc. On n'a jamais vu ça. Donc il a laissé libre cours à son imagination. Et cette liberté, on la retrouve aujourd'hui parce qu'on a de même la liberté d'interpréter, de rêver, de voir un peu ce qu'on veut. The Escorial. Austere palace, monastery and pantheon of grey granite, built by Philip II in 1557. Here the king could quietly devote himself to his favourite occupations, isolation, prayer, or the contemplation of his collection of paintings from the Spanish, Italian and early Netherlandish schools. <laughs> 